Hello. Welcome. Welcome to a very special evening for us. Welcome to the North American premiere of the feature debut film by Dennis Goulet, Night Raiders. My name is Cameron Bailey. I am the co-head and artistic director here at TIFF. And before we get any further along, I want to uh, ask you to join me in welcoming to the stage Elder Pauline Shirt and her daughter Luana Shirt. I want to say hello to everybody. Welcome. And I just want to say, uh, you know, I didn't keep quite this Nikaz Gibbon Senator them. And what we normally say is that bonjour the way Mark and the that means hello, my relatives, each and every one of you. So that's what I that's what you know uh, we all are in here. That's why we're here together in here supporting each other. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce my uh, my daughter here. What, she, what we are going to do, first of all, is we're going to smudge and purify and bless ourselves and bless the, the event, okay? And what I'm, what I'm holding here is Migize, and she is the one that's, uh, that gives the messages from the earth to the sky world, to the, uh, to the universe, you know, into the spirit world. And what she's doing is that she is... Uh, 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 using the sage, which is a female medicine that purifies us. And I really am so happy to be here that, you know, that we are in the midst of a great happening. And what I will do now is I will smudge myself, but also smudge, you know, the four directions, ask the four directions to come and be with us in here in this great, great, you know, happening. Also, the sky world and our dear mother, the earth. So I want to say miigwech, ay hi for, uh, for inviting me here. And I'd like to say ay hi to, uh, to the uh, to Toronto International Film Festival and also the Elevation Films. And also, I, it's just a great moment, great moment for us as Nihiawak, as uh, Anishinaabe people in here and in the land of the Mississaugas and uh, the Wendat and the Haudenosaunee people. I'd like to give credit to them and that, you know, that we are here together in this, uh, in this great film that has been, that has been produced and you know worked over by a person that I have such love and respect for. Her name is Donna Goulet, and all her family is here, and so is my family, my family and my granddaughters, my great, my grandchildren are here. So uh, I'd like to say that in here. This film, the reason why I am involved in this, in this film, when I was asked by Donis, was she asked me to talk my language, Cree. And that's what I speak, is Cree. I'm fluent in Cree. I am a Nihio Squel. And I and I just want to say hi 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 to everything. And the reason why, the main reason why I said yes to this was because I could speak my language. And that's the medicine this great woman, this great film has brought forward. Yes, yes, you know. And we've got to go on. And it's, uh, that's why I invited my family to come here and listen 
and listen and be with, with everybody in here. So it's a great happening for all of us, for it's our future that we're, that we're looking out for. It's a great future, a great happenings are coming because we are here, we are the caretakers of this land, and we are, all have to work you know, together. So I just want to say again, miigwech, miigwech to Cameron. You know, for introducing us that great, you know, that, you know, one of, he's one of our great leaders in here, but also to Donna and her family in here. I want to say how much, how much I enjoyed, you know, doing that film. So I just want to say that, uh, you know, that all the four directions, we've all, they're all in here. We've called on them, and they will, and they will be in here with the, with us through throughout you know the filming in in our lives so i want to say again i hike the naskum now and the way ma gonna do kakio gear wow muta kaya i the naskum now and the naskum out you need to say the naskum out dance naskum out kakio takapi to take you all a hand be which i hi 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 and i thank you cameron and i'd like to uh you know in our way of life you know, we always give thanks, not only, you know, by saying hi, hi, me, which, and all that to each other, but I'd like to give this to Cameron to carry on his work, because this is the time of when we say that, you know, this is the fall season, the beginning of the fall season, my daughter will tell you where that, where that, uh, you know, where it came from. Tell the people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, a, um, traditionally it was made. Uh, the original design was made by a Cree elder, and so we replicated that. And it is uh, deer hide and uh, other traditional hides, and it's a medicine bag. No miigwech. Oh. Yeah. So have a, have a great time, okay? Miigwech. Hey, hey. Thank you so much, Elder Pauline Shirt and Luana Shirt. Wow. Um, I, I am really moved by this. Uh, over the last few years, we have uh, begun every event at TIFF by um, acknowledging the land that we're on, and I do want to do that especially today, and I encourage all of you to reflect on the land that we're on together and the land that you might uh, live on at home or wherever uh, you are in the world. Right here, we're located on the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Wendat and the Haudenosaunee. Uh, this territory is within the lands protected by the Dish With One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant and it's home to many First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We're grateful to work on this land, and we've made a commitment to sharing and amplifying the stories of Indigenous people on this land through film. Um, you know, I'll, I'll just say something briefly um, in addition to that. Uh, I am a settler immigrant. Uh, my family is from Barbados. Uh, we were shaped by a different form of colonialism. Um, and when we come here, we also have a lot to learn. And I have tried to spend the last few years uh, learning things that I didn't learn in school, and I'm sure many of us did not learn in school who are not Indigenous about the lives and history of Indigenous people here. And I feel privileged to be able to present stories by Indigenous filmmakers, such as the one you're going to see tonight. And in addition to that, I will say that one of the people who has helped me learn the most has been Dana Skoulay. So it's, an especial, it's a special honor to be able to present her film to you this evening. We also want to thank the organizations and the people who make everything we do at TIFF possible. Um, our lead sponsor, Bell, our major sponsors, RBC, L'Oreal, Paris, and Visa, and our major supporters, the Government of Ontario, Telefilm Canada, and the City of Toronto. We also want to thank all of our members and donors, uh, maybe some of you here, uh, 
today who have done so much to keep us going through what's been a difficult time. It's been a difficult time for all of us, and if your job is to gather people together in large numbers, it's, it's been especially difficult, so thank you. Um, if you're interested in learning more about membership or donating to TIFF, you can go to tiff.net slash support. Uh, a reminder that this film is eligible for the Amplify Voices Award, which is presented by Canada Goose, the Sean Mendes Foundation Changemaker Award for Best Film by an Emerging Filmmaker that tackles issues of social change and also for the People's Choice Award. And you can vote for the People's Choice Award at tiff.net slash vote. Big thanks to Elevation Pictures, the distributor in Canada for uh, Night Raiders, and to Samuel Goldwyn Films, its US distributor, and XYZ, or XYZ Films, for providing us with a film. Uh, thanks also to Telefilm Canada for their generous support. And we also very much want to recognize today the province of Ontario. It's a valued and longtime supporter, helping to make TIFF happen each and every year particularly through key funding support from our major supporter, Ontario Creates. As such, we're delighted to welcome the uh, head of Ontario Creates tonight for this evening's screening, CEO Karen Thorne Stone. Thank you, Cameron, and good evening, everyone. It is absolutely my pleasure to be here in person with all of you tonight to help introduce the much anticipated film, Night Raiders. Um, but first, I do think we should take a moment to congratulate TIFF, the entire TIFF team, Cameron and Joanna in particular, for their incredible resilience and innovation during what has been, as Cameron was saying, a couple of very challenging festival years. TIFF continues to be a world-class festival in every way. They've adapted quickly and seamlessly to a virtual platform and a hybrid format, but they've also shown amazing leadership in getting us back in cinemas safely so that we can together enjoy a true festival experience. So I guess it goes without saying that Ontario Creates is a very proud and longtime partner of, of TIFF and, and this year's festival is, is no exception. We're thrilled to have played a supporting role in five films that are screening at the festival this year. And we're also proud to be celebrating our 16th annual International Financing Forum with compelling projects that are here from around the world. There have been more than 100 projects that have been financed and launched out of IF since its beginning, including Night Raiders. We were especially pleased to be a part of this important Canada-New Zealand co-production, supporting the film through our film fund, uh, but also through an on-set mentorship initiative that helped to ensure indig an Indigenous values approach to the production, building meaningful skills and capacity within the Indigenous film community and honouring the Cree language and culture that you'll see in tonight's film. So on behalf of our team at Ontario Creates, a huge congratulations to director and screenwriter, I should add, Dennis Goulet, to producers Tara Woodbury, Paul Barkin, Ainsley Gardner, Georgina Condor, Chelsea Winstanley, and really the entire New Zealand and Canadian cast and crew. I think it's fair to say that this project was truly a team effort and a labor of love, and we're really excited for them tonight as they get to introduce this film to the world and to all of you. Thank you, Karen. Um, you know, this, this is a solemn occasion. Uh, when you see the film, uh, you'll understand why. It's rooted in a very painful history, but it is also just a terrific movie, and I hope we can watch it in that spirit as well. Um, I will say, though, that there are aspects of uh, Night Raiders that we do want to just let you know about. Um, Dennis has, has, um, has uh, written a kind of a, a guide, I suppose, uh, for those who, who may uh, want to hear this. Uh, the film uh, is um, inspired by the, the colonial violence and trauma that many Indigenous people have experienced, including the removal of children. Some of these scenes could be upsetting or triggering, particularly for direct or intergenerational survivors of residential schools in the audience. We honor your experience the National Residential School Crisis Line, 
uh, can be reached. I, I will read out the number now. It's 1-866-925-4419, and it's available 24 hours a day. Before we bring out the director uh, and writer of this film, I want to introduce two remarkable producers uh, who also help bring Night Raiders to the screen. They are Tara Woodbury and Paul Barkin. Hi everyone, thank you so much for being here. This is an emotional night for us because it took us seven years to get to this moment. And first and foremost, we want to thank Danis for her vision and vulnerability in this process and her family as well. We want to thank our own friends and family who supported us for the seven years it took to make this. And we also want to thank Elevation Pictures for getting us to this moment and working tirelessly. We'd also like to thank uh, our key financial partners who um, made it possible to make this film, Telefilm Canada, uh, the Canada Media Fund, um, Ontario Creates, and as well as our broadcast partners, Bell Media and CBC Films. Um, yeah. It is a New Zealand Canadian co-production. It's actually a landmark one. It's the first Indigenous Canadian New Zealand co-production. It's a Cree Maori film. And thank you. <laughs> For reasons you can all guess, our New Zealand co-producers were not able to be here tonight, so we want to thank them, uh, Ainsley Gardner, Georgina Condor, and Chelsea Wynn Stanley, and we also want to thank our associate producer who's here, Eva Thomas. Thank you. And finally, we want to thank the New Zealand Film Commission for their vision. Um, as soon as we approached them about this, they were on board. Thank you. Um, We'd also like to thank uh, uh, the significant commitment uh, of our post-production partners in Canada, Company 3 and Sim International, and Park Road Post Production and OHFU FX in New Zealand, who were very supportive and innovative in uh, making this film happen across the globe during a pandemic. <laughs> and thank you so much to TIFF, and um, I guess you're going to bring up Dennis now. Yeah. <laughs> It's so exciting to see a talented filmmaker early in their career, uh, and you are a witness to the debut feature by Dana Goulet, who I think is one of the most talented filmmakers I've certainly seen working in quite a while. Dana was born in La Ronge, Saskatchewan. Uh, she began her career in film as a casting director, uh, made a number of short films, uh, some of which we showed here at the festival. Dana is also a former colleague. She was a programmer. Uh, for TIFF, uh, having come from the Imaginative Film Festival where she led uh, the programming uh, for a number of years. She has such a deep, thorough knowledge of film, and you'll see it on display here. Uh, her technical prowess, uh, her skill with storytelling, uh, the ideas, the big ideas in her film, but also the emotion, and pulling that all together is something you don't see very often. We're thrilled to present the film to you as the very first audience in Canada to see it. Please join me in welcoming the director of Night Raiders, Danis Goulet. Wow. Um, Dense do Demetek. Um, Kinanas Gumpton, uh, first off, Pauline Shirt, our elder, and to all of the elders here tonight, um, thank you for being here, everybody. Um, thank you to TIFF, of course, to Cameron, Diana, and Steve. And Cameron, um, Pauline said it earlier, but I just wanted to thank you so much for your support and encouragement, not only of the film, but of me personally, and also listening to calls from the community to take action towards a more inclusive industry, and you listened and you did that, and Kinanas Gompton for your leadership and vision.
Kinnan has in a wow to Paul and Tara. Paul, for your tenacity, persistence, and unwavering belief that we could make a bigger film than I ever thought possible. And Tara, you've been with me on this project since the beginning in 2013. Thank you for being a total warrior for the film and the fiercest protector of the creative vision and of our values. Um, thank you. Kinnanas Gumpton to the incredible cast who I'm so excited to show you all tonight, uh, led by the fearless Elmaya Tailfeathers and the incredible bright shining star, Brooksen, Brooklyn Letexier Hart. Um, it was the honor of my life to work with this cast and I'm still stunned by their absolute bravery and vulnerability in the telling of this story. to the entire amazing crew, and especially the Keys production designer, Zazu Myers, editor Jorge Weiss, and my longtime DOP, Daniel Grant. Um, to the entire Indigenous screen community who I've grown up with and have been such a source of strength and inspiration and they have really kept me going through challenging times and I'm so grateful for that support. As well to my friends who, um, I'm originally from Saskatchewan but we have created a little family here in Toronto and they have been also essential pillars of support over the years. Kinaneskum Dinawau to my family, both here in Toronto and back home in Saskatchewan, especially my Nemis Konegule and our little fire Iskochis. Um, my husband, Tony Elliott, who has been my rock and whose love and support has just been everything. I wouldn't be here without him. And my kids, Cassius and Riel, I feel like the luckiest person to be your mom. I don't know where they are, but I know they're here somewhere. <laughs> Thank you. It has been a long journey to get this film made. And in Night Raiders, I wanted to explore the colonial policies and the impact of those policies on indigenous children and families and parents and of course the residential school system which was a system that was in place for seven generations of indigenous families. I also wanted to tell a story about Sasi Penny Tamawin, Nipahistamasawin, Egwa, Sagi Itawin, which is resistance, perseverance and love. Resistance is the refusal to give up hope and it always comes from a place of love. The love for our children, for our communities, for our language and culture and our nations. So many people in the indigenous community have taught me about perseverance, resistance and love. But the two people that have taught me the most are my parents. Keith and Linda, they're here tonight from Saskatchewan. <laughs> <laughs> it is such a joy and the greatest honor to have them here. Mom and Dad, I love you. I'm so happy you're here tonight to share in this. Wow to you all. Thank you so much for being here and enjoy the film. <laughs> Uh, please uh, stick around after the film. Danis uh, and her team will be back for a Q&A. Please join me in welcoming the writer, director, and producer of Night Raiders, Dennis Goulet. <laughs> and actors, Brooklyn Letexier Hart, Violet Nelson, Jordan Bullchild, Gail Maurice, Suzanne Sear, Producers Tara Woodbury and Paul Barkin and Mr. Keith Goulet.
please, just, yeah, anyway, just, you can sit there. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Okay, please, wherever you like. Congratulations to all of you on this film. Dennis, I want to start with you. I think everyone here understands, or at least is aware, of the, uh, the roots of the story in uh, residential schools across Canada and in the US as well. Um, but you've made a really bold decision to not tell uh, a story based simply on the truth of that, but to take it into speculative fiction, even science fiction. And I, I wanted to ask you first about that decision, about using that genre uh, to tell this history. Yeah, I, um, around the winter of 2012, there was um, a protest movement that swept across Canada called Idle No More. And around that time, I was making a short film called Awakening, which was set in a very similar world. Oh, someone has saw, seen Awakening, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I Don't Know More was a movement where um, people were doing round dances in ma malls and shopping malls at the height of the sh Christmas shopping season. And I was glued to the feeds of this happening all across Canada. And it was so beautiful to see the youth standing up and being seen and heard in a way that, they, that I had never seen. It was the biggest resistance movement in my lifetime and on the prairies in Saskatchewan and it started there. And I just felt like I had to tell a story about our power as indigenous people. Thank you. And then when I made Wakening, which was kind of an experiment because it was a commission, I just was thinking about telling a story about Wisagichak and Witigo, which are two classic Cree characters. And I just sort of as an experiment thought, what if I place them in a near future and what would that do to you know, the mode of storytelling? And I found that it really freed me up as a storyteller. Um, and I would say even more importantly, it provides a layer of protection for everybody working on the film when you go into fiction. Um, obviously this is very intense subject matter and um, I wanted to express it in a way that gave people a fresh entry point into it, and then for all of us working on it, a layer of protection. Thank you. Um, now, this is a Canadian feature film. Uh, you're not working with a matrix budget, <laughs> but you really did, I think, build a world that's very um, immersive and, and persuasive. We feel like we're there in the near future. I wanted to ask you about your approach to world building and maybe I'll also ask uh, Tara and Paul to, to contribute to that conversation because you must have had a lot of decisions to make about how you would create that world and make it so convincing. Yeah, um, you know, I'm the VFX team that we worked with, which were in New Zealand, Park Road Post, which are just absolutely world class and we were so lucky to work with them in order to help create the worlds, but I'm also um, a big fan of kind of like things that feel grounded and tactile and visceral. And so I really insisted that we shoot on location so it didn't feel like a green screen studio movie. Um, so we just jumped all around and it made it logistically incredibly taxing and very challenging. But it, to me, it was really important that you felt the presence of those things in the world as if they're really there. And also the production designer, Zazu Myers, is like a firecracker and she's brilliant and her dedication and commitment and vision was absolutely a joy to work with. Thank you. Anything to add, Tara, Paul? 
No, I think Danis right off the bat said she wanted to create this tactile real world. So, you know, when it rained one day, we were like, great, free atmosphere. <laughs> It'll feel extra real. We built the drones. We did everything as real as we possibly could. So, I mean, so real, so real. Like, there's uh, scenes at the beginning of the film where it's snowing, and we kind of wanted it to be like that. And it isn't a VFX, but it, you would think that it's normal. Um, just an amazing, Danis really pushed hard, really hard to find the, lo the key locations to make this vision work. And then to be able to do that with a very limited VFX budget to really deliver some special stuff. Um, it was really incredible. I'd like to hear from your cast now. And Brooklyn, can I start with you? Um, I'd love to know what it was like for you to play Wasis. It's a central role and you have to develop a kind of a a, a, a family relationship that feels real with your mother, who's played by uh, Elmaya Tailfeathers in the film. How did you create that sense of a real family for your character? Well, before filming, we um, spent a lot of time together and bonding and um, just trying to get to know each other and make it feel as um, real as possible, I guess. and. It honestly really did help because we um, built a very good bond on set and um, it really helped. Thank you. I, I want to go to the rest of you. And Gail, can I start with you? Um, veteran actor, you, we've seen you in so many films and TV shows over the years. Um, this is a unique film, I think, probably for everyone. What was the entry point for you in terms of your character and the story you were telling? How did you create your character with Dennis? Um, so I've worked with Dennis before and I love working with her and hopefully uh, I'll be on your next one again. <laughs> <laughs> Always, can't do it without Gail. <laughs> and um, uh, I auditioned and uh, getting a chance to speak uh, Cree Michif on it uh, was just, um, uh, just an honor, and uh, yeah, uh, so I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> just um, having the opportunity to actually um, speak uh, the language that my grandma taught me and uh, that Dana speaks and uh, Keith speaks. Um, uh, it's when I speak the language, um, it's not only words, um, there's so much power in it. Uh, everything comes from the earth, through my DNA, through my blood. All my ancestors are talking um, through me when we speak the language. So for Dana to give me that opportunity to um, and it's just, uh, it was just, just an honor, just an honor, huge honor. Jordan, uh, Violet, Suzanne, I, I want to ask you as well, and maybe I'd like to ask you what it was like on set. What was the, um, the atmosphere like on set for you as you were, you were creating this world, but of course it had resonance in real uh, history, real painful history. What was it like for you when, once you were on set and in your character? Yeah. Uh, we'll start with Jordan and then we'll go to the other. Sorry. <laughs> but honestly, it was breathtaking first stepping on the set, Danis did an amazing job of finding the location. And like she said earlier, it's, it was more of a, a vibe to get that story out of all of us, right? So it was just an honor and just unspeakable. <laughs> like I just can't even put it into words. Thank you, Suzanne. Uh, Danis and Tara and all of the producers and the elder, they just made it a very safe place to be. We were shooting in um, an abandoned psychiatric hospital and definitely the energy there had the energy of pain in it. And 
I remember being behind a door before I'm going to make my first entrance, and the guy there was with the walkie-talkie, and we both looked at each other, and I said, do you feel it? He said, yeah, I feel it. And I never wanted to be alone in any of the rooms by myself. We always would look to make sure that there was somebody else around. So, um, but just, it was just very safe. Safe to do our work, safe to connect, safe to be and do whatever we had to do to make this scene work. Thank you. And Violet, what was it like for you? Um, it was, I really liked it because there was a lot of, in, a lot of Indigenous people on set. So I kind of felt at home, I guess. <laughs> because whenever we were on set and we're waiting to like shoot the next take, we would all just joke around or um, tell stories about each other's lives. And yeah, I just, I enjoyed being on set. And Dennis is amazing. Um, she also made me feel very comfortable to uh, play Simonex as well. And gave me a few pep talks before yelling, get the fuck off our land. <laughs> um. I think that line's gonna become a classic. <laughs> I also just say that we're all missing Almaya tonight. She is shooting in Montreal and she's on a plane but didn't get offset in time and she's on a huge new series and so it's for the best reason possible. And I also want to introduce my dad, Keith, who's sitting at the end there. <laughs> He, he plays one of the elders in the camp teaching Cree to the kids, um, but he also plays a really integral role in the development of the film. Whenever I'm uh, making any film, I just sit around the kitchen table with him and he tells me concepts in Cree that I begin to weave into the development of the story as I write the script, and it's a role that is much more about just translation. It is philosophical and because Cree's his first language but it's not mine it's something that um, is essential to the way that I make my work thank you Keith I was about to go to you next actually and if you're from Saskatchewan and I bet there are some people here yes really okay good then you will know uh, that Keith Goulet was uh, an MLA for Cumberland in Saskatchewan for many years, uh, a Métis member of the Cumberland House uh, Cree Nation, uh, and uh, groundbreaking in, in many of the things that uh, he did, one of the first uh, Indigenous members of Cabinet, as I, as I understand, in Saskatchewan, if not the first. So thank you for being here. In addition to everything you did to help Dennis get to where she is today, to talk through uh, the making of this film, to be a part of the film, I understand there's a contribution you want to make tonight as well. Yes, uh, it's a great honor for me to arrive here in Toronto, to come and see the film, you know, that my daughter created. Mistay dagaga ni tena. Mistay mi ni ni ma mit se dano dan se ga se ga ski tato dan se mena. My wife and I, and the whole family and friends, are extremely overjoyed. We are also very very proud of what she has been able to accomplish. I look at the crowd up front here, and also with the other people that I saw on set. It was a combination of both First Nations and uh, Métis people and non-Aboriginal peoples, you know, of Canada. It made me pretty proud to see people working together, but it's to see our own people in key positions. Be her being the director and key players within the whole movie. It made me feel really, really proud, you know, as a dad. And the other thing is that sometimes we tend to walk lightly and not deal with the real tough issues of the time. 
Yet he grabbed a hold of many issues, but one key issue that is even way back in the past and today, and she was able to do that. She was able also, in my ways, and looking at it, to be able to see it not only in the past, because when I was looking at the discussion of the North, for us, the North means key waiting, and we honor the four directions ceremony. Key waiting means go home. This story is a long story because what went home in North America were the glaciers. We knew that the glaciers went home and we have met with challenges ever since that time to the very day today. It is the meeting of the challenges that she was able to grab and be able to say, yes, we can succeed when we meet up with the challenges, to come together. And that is what I saw in the feeling. And that's what made me extremely proud to say, yes, I'm her father. How? Here goes it. I would like to therefore offer her some flowers and a blanket to commemorate the situation uh, this very important night tonight. Jessica. First of all, the blanket, of course, it represents warmth. To the meeting up with the challenges from long history, you know, to the modern day. And so I'm going to put the blanket around her to symbolize this important day. <laughs> Along with the blanket, to express our love to our daughter, Danis. Of course, everybody knows Danis means my daughter in Cree. I was it. Mr. Goulet, thank you so much. That is all the time we have, but we couldn't have ended on a more beautiful moment. I want to thank you all for being here. I want to thank you all for making this film that I hope everyone gets a chance to see. And uh, thank you all for being here tonight as well. <laughs> Are you going to do some, some photos now, Dennis? <laughs> cool. <laughs> Someone should get photos of you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Please join me in thanking Mr. Keith Goulet, producers Paul Barkin and Tara Woodbury, Violet Nelson, Suzanne Sear, Gail Maurice, writer-director-producer Dennis Goulet, Jordan Bullchild, and Brooklyn Latexier Hart, the team from Night Raiders.